Welcome everyone to this session of World Water Week. My name is Heather Skilling. I'm the Chief of Party of USAID Fragile Waters, a global USAID project expanding water security practices and knowledge in fragile contexts. I'll be moderating this session, which is called Bridging Borders, Water for Peaceful, Sustainable Futures. The session includes participation from the USAID STAWI project in Kenya and USAID Terre OV in Niger. We know that water insecurity has never been a more pressing challenge. We see stronger storms flooding cities and our infrastructure, droughts are withering crops and drying sources, and diseases are appearing where we never saw them before. So all of these heighten the risk of fragility and conflict within our communities. Without action, climate change could push an additional 100 million people into poverty by 2035 and potentially displace a billion people by 2050. We know that solutions to water insecurity are of necessity accomplished through collaborative efforts across borders, across sectors, across constituencies, whether at a community, a national or regional level. So in this session, Stowey will share national and county level perspectives on Kenya's long awaited intergovernmental framework for water security. While Tero V will speak to its experience in Niger, facilitating local cooperation as a pathway to mitigation of conflict and water security. Time permitting, the presentations will be followed by audience questions, so I'd encourage you all to put questions in the chat as we move along. Let's start by hearing from Brian Mutoka. Brian is the program lead for water, environment, and climate at the Council of Governors in Kenya. Brian, would you like to kick us off? Thank you. Thank you, moderator Heather, uh, for the opportunity to uh, ventilate on this very important um, topic of intergovernmental collaboration. And I request uh, that we move to the next slide. The purpose of any intergovernmental framework, and in this case, of the water sector, is to steer the attainment of a robust, sustainable water sector in Kenya through the coordination of the attainment of policy goals and standards in the sector. Uh, this serves to establish a platform for dialogue, uh, recognizing that Kenya has uh, a devolved system of government. The two levels of government must come together so that uh, matters of common interest in the water sector, matters governance and others, must be canvassed to a logical conclusion. And how would the water sector that is um, functioning well look like? There has to be effectiveness. There has to be trust and engagement. There has to be policy coherence. The financing of the sector must be able to give hope to the, uh, towards the universal coverage that is envisioned in our policy documents. And data must also be available. Next. Um, the intergovernmental framework is um, underpinned or has three relational principles, uh, the principle of subsidiarity, the principle of distinctness, and the principle of interdependence. The principle of distinctness obligates that government at either level will not utilize um, the opportunity or take advantage of executing an intergovernmental framework to perform the functions of the other level of government. So that respects the constitutional status of the, of the other level of, of government in terms of functional assignment. Interdependence obligates that both levels of government must be able to work together, collaborate for service delivery to be achieved. And subsidiarity requires that uh, the, the communities who bear the brand of climate change, who bear the brand of water shortage, must be involved in decision making and government at the national level must be uh, held uh, into account in terms of checks and balances for service delivery uh, across the sectors. Could we move to the next slide, please? 
the intergovernmental uh, framework establishes various structures. Um, we have the leadership level, which is the water sector coordination forum. This apex level uh, brings together the cabinet secretary of water and the chairperson of water at the Council of Governors, who are the co-chairs, uh, brings together the CEOs of all the water agencies under the Ministry of Water, the 47 uh, ministers in charge of water, and also the governors who are members of uh, the Water Committee at the Council of Governors to canvas matters of common interest. And also this is able to co-opt other members, including development partners, private sector, and civil society organization, and they meet once annually. The steering level also brings two the co-chair personships, being the Minister for Water at the national level and the, and the chairperson of the Council of, of Council of Governors Committee on Water, and the members of the caucus of CECs, uh, or the leadership level, because they have their leadership, as well as uh, governors who are members of the Committee of Water, but provides for um, a representation whereby the CEO Council of Governors can represent um, the, the chairperson for water, as well as the PS, water and, water and sanitation services, being able to represent uh, the CS. Uh, technical cooperation level, this is whereby we have the five thematic working groups, which are the policy, governance, and financing. We have the water resources management, sanitation management, water services, capacity building. And these technical thematic working groups are the think tanks of the intergovernmental framework and have chairpersons who take or uh, are able to see the content that sees its way to the steering uh, level of the intergovernmental framework. This is because this is more of the, the technical arm that sees the content that goes into the apex level of the intergovernmental framework, which is the forum. Looking at the secretariat function, um, this is whereby we have the secretariat to the entire intergovernmental framework being a very important uh, structure of the intergovernmental framework because they are responsible for operationalizing various structures of the intergovernmental framework through supporting uh, in terms of policy and also technical matters. And in this case, the ministry nominates two representatives to the secretariat, as well as the Council of Governors nominating two representatives to the secretariat. But parties uh, in their mutual collaboration and agreement can make a resolution on, on the membership or the hosting of the secretariat on matters financing and all that. Can we move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, when you talk about dispute resolution, um, because it is anticipated that dispute may arise in the performance of functions in the, this very critical sector. And the parties uh, within uh, 60 days can agree to resolve or have a conversation towards resolving um, the dispute that is at hand. In any case, that the dispute is not resolved, uh, articles of Articles 189 of the Constitution of Kenya and also Section 33 uh, of the Intergovernmental Relations Act that confers the Intergovernmental Relations Technical, Com Technical Committee to resolve intergovernmental disputes are uh, invoked and the dispute uh, is, uh, will be able to um, have a mute, um, arbitration by a neutral party towards um, a conclusion that will be fair for each of the parties that are executing the intergovernmental framework. And I'll take you now to the next slide that whereby we will also be able to see the progress in terms of implementing the framework, how it has uh, helped the country uh, resolve water-related conflicts and move forward together. And there is already a roadmap of implementation of the water sector intergovernmental framework, which is developed with the concurrence of both parties um, that uh, indicates when various structures will be established. We have the intergovernmental consultation whereby we've been able to convene the first for a meeting, bringing together the Senate, the National Assembly, the governments, and we have joint a joint communique that seeks to accelerate the realization of water goals in the sector. This has also been able to look into uh, disputes in the water sector, resolve, resolve disputes that are pitting two county governments uh, so that uh, no county is aggrieved 
and every county is able to get their fair share of resources that appertains to conservation, be it through the programs that are negotiated among others. The constitutional alignment will be able to build consensus on which functions belong to which level of government towards accountability and towards respect to the principle of distinctness that obligates that no other level of government will perform the functions of the other level of government for that case. Accountability and efficiency, um, we've been able to undertake audit of loans because we look into maximizing the impact of these projects at the county level. We want to shift from duplication of um, that uh, may result from programs that are looking to uh, realize some objectives of enhancing water access by ensuring that the disbursement-linked uh, disbursement indicators and also the, the, the priorities of respective subnational governments align, but also try to move away from duplication and also looking into the scale of projects that uh, are being able to uh, be leveraged to the communities so that the lifespan of these projects is also guaranteed as well as the, their benefit to the communities. Water sector financing, uh, the intergovernmental framework has offered a platform whereby we can be able to jointly uh, review um, and design donor programs in respecting the functional integrity of both levels of government and also looking into the impact of the same. Mobilization of political goodwill. The, mob the political goodwill, as you all may understand, is very critical when it comes to uh, determining the, how what the impact uh, some decisions policy decisions will have in to service delivery and through the intergovernmental framework which is the backbone of the national water investments uh, water and sanitation uh, financing plan which harmonizes the investments investment priorities for both levels of government have been able to uh, to gain some level of political goodwill, which we believe is very healthy for a well-functioning sector, and we hope to uh, upscale the same in the future. I thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. I appreciate that. And now for a county level perspective, we're going to move on to Patrick Wadu, also in Kenya, with decades of experience with water and sanitation operations and policy. Patrick is the Director of Water and Sanitation Services for Taita Teveta County in Kenya. Patrick, are you with us? Yeah, thank you, Hitha. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very much excited to be part of this discussion, discuss collaboration across borders uh, to enhance water security. And uh, today, uh, I'll be presenting on how we are resolving water conflicts and enhancing water security at community level. And this will be the strategic approach of the country government of Taita Taveta in Kenya. Uh, just to give a brief background uh, of the Taita Taveta County, Taita Taveta County is one of the 47 administrative uh, districts established under the new uh, constitution of Kenya. And uh, in our county, water conflicts has been a major challenge, and this has been driven by factors such as climate change and variability, uh, increasing population and water demand, and inadequate water supply infrastructure. The county has a projected population of around 371,000 people, uh, projected from the National 2019 Census, and the county covers a total land area of 17,084 square kilometers. And out of that, 62% uh, is this, the famous Savo East and Savo West National Parks. 24% is covered by rangeland, uh, which compose of uh, community and uh, private uh, ranches. And uh, the remaining 14% is where the human population reside. And uh, the objective of this presentation is to share the county government experiences, strategies, and how we apply the intergovernmental framework in resolving uh, water conflicts at community level uh, through formal and informal structures and mechanisms. 
we look at the key drivers and conflict dynamics, um, the, the key drivers are, are, are threefold. We have issues on resource scarcity, issues on uh, competition among various users, and inadequate uh, infrastructure. Uh, and these uh, drivers have been uh, excavated by, of course, uh, the issues of climate change. We have experienced prolonged droughts, uh, and we are over relying on rain-fed water sources. And this has led to severe water shortages. And when you look at the various water users, we've been having conf we've been experiencing conflicts uh, between agricultural uh, farmers and pastoral communities human beings and wildlife. On the side, you can see a photo of wild animals, and those are elephants uh, invading our water supply facility in Maungu region uh, in our county. Uh, we're having conflicts between upstream communities and downstream communities. And uh, of late, we've been having uh, conflicts between uh, neighboring counties over the shared water resources. And this, you're talking about the Mzima Springs, which is located in the Savo West National Park, which has been shared between uh, Taita Taveta County, Kuala County, Tilifi, and Mombasa counties. And we've been having uh, conflicts among these counties over the bulk water sharing from that particular source. Um, on top of that, uh, the issue of inadequate water supply infrastructure is also an issue. Uh, the existing infrastructure is not is very old, and most of it is dilapidated and cannot carry uh, enough water to meet uh, the various users, uh, the various needs uh, of our communities. Next slide, please. Now, under the Constitution of Kenya 2010 and the National Water Act uh, of 2016. The county governments have been uh, given a mandate and responsibility for provision of water and sanitation services in their juris jurisdictions. And uh, given this uh, enormous mandate, uh, the county government uh, is implementing and has been implementing uh, a multistructural approach and strategy to ensure that it achieves uh, its, uh, its mandate. And on the issues on infrastructure development, um, the county government, uh, in collaboration with the national government and other partners, we've been expanding the urban and rural water supply systems. Uh, and this has be, involves uh, uh, increasing the water production capacities. We've been investing in developing uh, new water sources, which includes uh, springs, uh, dams, uh, Investing in the water distribution networks, we've been rehabilitating uh, pipeline networks for our communities, communities' water supply schemes, and uh, doing pipeline extensions to the unserved and underserved regions of our county. And this has enabled us to increase access and uh, equitable access uh, to our people as we move towards uh, achieving universal access uh, to water services. Uh, apart from that, we've been uh, applying the intergovernmental relations. Uh, uh, regulations which were published in the year 2021 and uh, most important of it is the alternative dispute, dispute resolution mechanisms where we are involving local mediation committees and traditional dispute resolution practices to resolve uh, inter-community conflicts uh, conflicts uh, between uh, various users we are having pastoralists who are uh, uh, doing livestock production in the ranches and also farmers who are doing crop production uh, apart from that um, when we come to water services, uh, in the county, we have uh, a one licensed water service provider, which is the Water and Sewerage Company Limited. And this company is has major disoperations in the urban and peri-urban areas. But also we have uh, uh, two thirds of the county population residing in the rural areas. And this way we have a major problem where we have over 124 small scale uh, water supply schemes which have been managed by voluntary uh, water management committees. And these have been uh, these schemes have been plugged with high levels of functionality, and we are now transitioning to uh, professional management of water services in the rural areas. And we've been forming a water users users associations, where we are now transitioning from community management, to professional management using the UWAS. And with this, uh, we've been able to see progress in uh, regularizing and professionalizing management of water services in the rural areas. Apart from that, uh, we are working on the uh, legal and policy interventions. And um, uh, as much as we have the national legislations, uh, there are very unique challenges and uh, specific needs at county level. So to, together with the USAID STAWI project, uh, the county government is now preparing a county-specific water act 
uh, water policy rules and regulations, which will provide the legal uh, framework uh, to, 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 to make interventions that are going to ensure we uh, uh, resolve the challenges that we are experiencing in our journey to realize universal access. In our experience, uh, we have identified uh, key areas where uh, we are working very well and we're making strides uh, towards uh, uh, universal access and enhancing water security in our, in our area. And uh, one of them is, and I've talked about this, is on alternative dispute, dispute resolution mechanisms. Uh, I'll give a, a case where Teleta Veta County and Kole County have been having a dispute of water service provision in the bordering area of Maknon, uh, Maknon uh, which is a border area between Kwale and Teleta Veta County. Uh, uh, the respective water service providers from both counties have been uh, conflicting over providing water services in that particular area in terms of revenues, in terms of connecting water to customers. And on, to resolve this matter, we were able to sit down. We engaged both the intergovernmental relations uh, mechanisms uh, and also uh, local, uh, I mean, traditional uh, dispute resolution mechanisms where we had uh, leadership uh, leaders from both counties meeting together uh, and uh, uh, discussing issues and other service provision in that area. And these uh, we were able to uh, slaughter ships and goats where we had a common meal and also we agreed on on having a proper way on managing water services in that particular area. We've also been able to use a similar mechanism in resolving inter-community conflicts between upstream and downstream uh, communities, a case of Nyangoro Makta water supply project, where the upstream community did not want uh, water to be provided to the downstream communities. We also been able to bring the communities together uh, and educate them on the issues surrounding uh, uh, conservation of water resources and equitable use. And uh, today, these communities are now sharing the resource and uh, we've been able to supply over 17,000 uh, people with clean water in that particular area. Apart from that, uh, community involvement has been key in ensuring that we make, we've, we make major strides in water service provision. And uh, in our budgeting processes, uh, we have community engagements during budget preparation, during budget implementation, and also during um, uh, monitoring exercises on how we've uh, managed to implement our programs. And this has created ownership, community ownership of projects that and programs that we're implementing with the community. And this has also brought uh, everyone together towards addressing uh, the water issues that we're having in the county. Uh, apart from that, uh, we've, been, we've invested in continuous capacity development and training uh, and through the USAID STAWI program and STAWI machine learning program, we've been conducting extensive trainings to local water committees on how they can transit from uh, community management to professional water management. We've been uh, sensitizing the communities on issues on uh, the importance of uh, proper maintenance of water infrastructure and how we can resolve any conflicts that can arise uh, during uh, or rather in, in, in the water services uh, business. And uh, with that, uh, we, we, we are moving towards sustainable uh, water uh, services management. And uh, given the challenges that we're having, we've been having a lot of partners on board, uh, but previously we've been having a lot of fragmented efforts. And to resolve that, um, we've been able to create a common platform for coordination for planning, coordination, and implementation, we've we 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 came up with the Teleta Veta Wash and Environment Coordinating Forum, where we've brought all stakeholders in the water sector on board, and with this framework, we've been able to have uh, joint planning, joint resource mobilization, joint monitoring and evaluation. We track progress together, and we share experiences and learn. And, and adapt on how we are going to, 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 to move towards achieving universal access. Uh, and with this, uh, we assure that uh, with the coordinated efforts, uh, we'll be able to make strides towards uh, achieving the target of 2030 where everyone is expected to have universal access. And apart from that, um, we all agree that we, the sector is underfunded and through the intergovernmental framework, uh, 
uh, that we have in, in the country, we've been able to uh, secure partnerships that has been able to, to bring on board uh, more financing into the sector to address issues on infrastructure development, addressing issues on poli policy and, 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 and the legal framework. And with this, we've been able to also create an environment where we can bring on board the private sector, and we've been leveraging on their on, on their on private sector, private sector finance, and also the innovation, uh, which will be key uh, in accelerating access towards water security in our region. And I'm looking forward to having greater conversations on how we're going to 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 have joint uh, efforts towards uh, accelerating access uh, towards uh, water and sanitation, and also improving water security globally. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick, for that. Uh, you highlighted a couple really interesting things there, both about financing and how these collaborative frameworks give some confidence to other partners who might be able um, to contribute towards water security. So thanks for that. We're going to turn now to Niger and hear from Amadou Seyo. So Amadou is a veterinarian, but he has deep NRM experience in the Sahel and is currently the technical advisor and lead of sustainable and productive land use for the Tero V project. For reasons of connectivity, we've pre-recorded his remarks. He is online and will be available for questions, but we wanted to just make sure that you were able to hear his remarks. So we'll turn now to a recording and a PowerPoint and a video from that project. Hello, uh, this is Amadou Sayo. I'm a technical advisor. I'm working for Tero V project funded by USAID. I am pleased to share with you our experience on local convention to improve water surface access in Niger. Uh, Niger is a landlocked country with a, a very difficult uh, context. Uh, we have a long dry season uh, and then a short uh, rainy season. So access to water is very crucial for people for the livelihood. Uh, and then uh, it's, this is uh, uh, actually uh, due to climate change and also uh, demographic growth. It's very difficult for people to access, uh, to have regular access to water uh, for different uses. Uh, as a consequence, we have uh, impact on activities, uh, like such as fisheries, such as, such as uh, irrigation, and then you have competition between people uh, for use, use of these resources. So Fertel OV is uh, to address this situation is uh, focusing on three components. Uh, the first component is uh, assured uh, water security, the second is land use, and the first is uh, risk management. So in order to ensure that people are more resilient, we uh, try to also focus on, on a specific aspect of, on uh, uh, multiple use of water. To uh, facilitate this, uh, we, the entry point for us was uh, to bring different stakeholders and actors uh, around the rural court, which is the national uh, entity in charge of uh, natural resource management in Niger. Uh, and then we bring the learning from different uh, experience from different stakeholders uh, and we end up with uh, coming with a national guideline. Uh, this national guideline uh, help us to ensure compliance with much, uh, different policies, but also will be a guideline to use by different stakeholders. And then it will also help us to really to assure something which is streamlined for different stakeholders across the country and different regions. So uh, this guideline uh, is uh, focusing on uh, one aspect with uh, different uh, principle. Uh, this principle are uh, really uh, used to ensure that we reduce conflict, but also ensure that it, uh, the owner, uh, improve ownership, uh, also uh, uh, equity uh, around uh, access to different uh, resources. Uh, one of them uh, are uh, inclusiveness. 
uh, empowerment of people, but also ensure that people are, are also uh, able to learn from the, what they do. Uh, why we insist on inclusiveness? Because uh, we uh, have uh, some stakeholders who are only present during one part of the year, uh, during rainy season, or just three years uh, out of 12. Uh, then we three months, and then they left for different areas in the south, in Nigeria, or even in Cameroon, or other areas in the country, and then they will be back during the rainy season. So when you develop a, a local convention, these people are not, are not around. We have to use uh, to find a way to involve them uh, while they are not present, but also consider when they, they are back, they can, use, they, they can share their lesson, they also they share, share uh, feedback on the process. So this is very important. Uh, as long as you, you use, uh, also include women and uh, youth and all this, but uh, the most critical one is really to, um, to bring uh, stakeholders uh, like pastoralists in the process. Uh, we develop uh, 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 overall uh, 47 uh, local conventions, and this uh, one of them were, uh, are focusing on water point, uh, surface water point. Uh, overall, this uh, local uh, local convention focusing on lack of uh, water point to cover around 600 hectares. Uh, this this is a really interesting process because. Uh, we have to bring together different users, uh, fisheries, irrigation, uh, uh, herders. Uh, so pastoralists and other actors are bringing together. But also you, you have to bring technical services to work as well. That's in the, another level of collaboration. Another level of collaboration is to bring different projects which are, are, are intervening in the same area to work together to ensure to support this process. So this is a different level of collaboration. So, Overall, we said we used to say that uh, the local convention is a two le two, two levels uh, 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 really agreement. The first agreement is between the, use, the users. Uh, various users agree on how to use and how to plan and manage the, the resource. The second level is these users agree have an agreement with the community. And then we have the agreement with the commune, and then this is signed, and then they have the authority to implement what they agreed on. That's uh, uh, what we, we call the second layer of uh, agreement. So when you develop the co local convention, uh, we to, you have to ensure this is uh, you include in the process uh, how you secure the resource, the way it's going to be done, the role of different stakeholders in the process. How it is going to restore this process because of you have always this issue of er erosion, you have a climate, you have wind, you have the sun coming in the, in, the, in the area, so you have to protect it. So the restoration is something that you have to plan it, how you're going to restore but also continue to use it. Uh, so this is why people have to be organized uh, and then so to monitor the process across the year. So here we want to share uh, through a video uh, some impact of the, the local convention around uh, the first web. Kulada <laughs> Mana gani sajikin ya shahi harakat tabiki. Kama ya bada umani saririka kama ya nda zaa yitatalinshi. Daa chumulishi ya kasanchi uruwa.
kullun akwai shi da yanda za a yi umfani da shi daidai bakin gwalgwado to tunda muka fara shiga cikin aiki na convention local mun samu canji sosai lokacin da in dama na tayi datti da ruwa yake ka da zub da shara bakin tafki duka yanzu an dena su horo ne muka yi ta bada mai da muna ta fadakarwa ce muka yi tayi akan illata shine yasa kuma Allah ya taimake mu mutane suka saurare mu abubuwan suka rage muna gani mun fara samun canji bisa tsabta tsabta ta ruwa mun samu canji anan da muna da matsaloli tsakanin mu da makiyaya saboda shi kun sa danin ku kawai an gari yawa yake su zo su shiga su muku kwanta an shayi musulhu amma tun kafin a yi wannan kungiya ta kile amma da aka yi kile to muna dan fa'inta juna har yanzu dai wani abu bai gama mu da mu da su yanzu da aka fara yarjejeniya mun samu sauki tunda mu da aka ce mu kiyaye mashal mun kiyaye ta bin madani a cikin ta lokacin nan akwai ma lokacin da zaka zo ka wuce gurin ban ruwa kan dabobin ka su komo in ka komo sai ka tar da an shifka gurin a ce ba ka wuce ba kalkata ka min nan a shiga jihadi mun gamsu da abun da aka mumu an zo an kare mumu tamakunan mu na ban ruwa an kare mumu rijiyoyin mu na ban ruwa an kare mumu burtulan mu da dan dajijjukan mu gurin da dabobin mu suke gilmawa In terms of sustainability, we uh, see uh, the fact that we have been able to uh, link the local convention with the, uh, the national guideline, uh, which is uh, helping the women to have their own planning for the five-year planning. Uh, this helps us to ensure that at least four or five steps out of 12 uh, develop, needed for the, to develop a local convention will be covered by the co-planning the co -planning and the women. So you have only seven steps that you have to do, specific steps to develop uh, when you do the women. This is, uh, will reduce cost, reduce time, but also uh, ensure own ownership of this process from the women. So they will allocate over years of resources to, for this, uh, to implement, uh, to sustain the, the, the local convention development, also plan new uh, local convention. The other element is because you work with the, the community, use participatory approach, people see themselves uh, really empowered. And then they, they take various initiatives. One of them, for example, uh, you have in, uh, uh, in our area, more than 200 kilometers delimited and marked by the, the community, while before they need to have the support from local authority to do this. Now they have been able to say, give themselves empowered to have this kind of uh, initiatives. In terms of a lesson, we uh, uh, insist on one element crucial, which is flexibility. Because sometimes project, the project, because we have time frame, we have planning, uh, annual work plan, and all this, we, we tend to really push and, and, and accelerate the process. While sometimes you have to go back and forth, and this is something very important to ensure that you take the time to really ensure that, okay, people have the feedback, you share the rules, people understand what's going on, the, the, the voice will be heard, and then they will adapt it. Uh, because one of the key elements is to ensure that everyone is used. So for example, you have a debate in a, at the radio level, just uh, radio station, and then the people will really call and then share their, their own feedback on this and say, okay, this is, this is good, but this is not going to good in some areas and all. So, and so on. So you have this kind of situation. Flexibility is a key 
to ensure that you have large process because you have various stakeholders and the branch people who are even who, who are not living there who are, should be involved. Uh, the other element is to also to ensure that you consider different level of intervention. Uh, you intervene in a one local point, but it brings different stakeholders at different level. Uh, at the users who are the locally there, and then you have a commune which is also involved in, and then sometimes even at the higher level. So you have to bring these people, and, uh, and sometimes some private intervening in the same area has to be involved. Uh, so to also bring people to have the, because when it's large, like you have 10,000 hectares, uh, you, have this, you have to ensure that this, uh, uh, how people see the map and understand visual uh, is important. So bringing the maps and using GIS is crucial. So, so the, when in area you have a very high level of liter, uh, illit literacy, uh, people are not really they don't know how to use the French, and then they have to be, go through literacy, and then they have few people who can do it. So you have to consider this process uh, this also in the process. Collaboration is key. Uh, as I mentioned, we have collaboration at different level between the users between uh, technical service, between uh, various uh, stakeholders on project intervening in the area. And then you also bring the, the, the community in the process, the local authorities, also chief senses. So this, all these uh, processes is very important to ensure that the collaboration is taken. Uh, for example, we have to ensure the sequencing and layering between the different uh, stakeholders while the, those intervening at the community level will be involved while those who are intervening at a community level will have their own role. So joint planning is key in this process. So uh, at the end of the day, we are, uh, we are trying to model this and then this, in order to be sure that it's going to be uh, scale up and, uh, and share with different stakeholders in the country. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, Amadou. That was really great. I gave a flavor for the complexity of some of these conversations and the many different stakeholders that you need to bring together. We're going to turn now to some of the questions that came up in the um, chat. And again, I welcome anyone to um, include any other questions that you might have. Um, Sari, I don't know if you want to read them, but I'm I'm happy to start off with the question we had about water quality. And this, I believe, was for um, Patrick, where you had said that you were supplying water for over 70,000 people. And there was a question about how you were managing water quality for the different users and the standards used for that, whether you're following WHO quality standards or um, how you were just managing that process. Hey, thank you, Hida, for that question. And uh, it's not 70,000 people. We are uh, supplying water to 371, the po a population of 371,000 people who reside in the county. And yes, we do follow WHO water quality guidelines uh, as a standard, especially for drinking water. And these guidelines uh, are critical in ensuring that the water we supply is really safe and meets the international health standards. However, managing water quality effectively requires, of course, a tailored approach, and uh, it also depends on the intended use for water. Uh, for drinking water, we really are there to strictly to the WHO guidelines, which we've adopted as a, as a country, and which are also been monitored by the national regulator, which is the Water Services Regulatory Board and focuses on uh, parameters on microbiological quality, chemical uh, quality, and also the physical aspects uh, of the water. Uh, but of course, for other users, uh, of course, uh, uh, there are different levels for agriculture, for irrigation, and there are different uh, levels of quality that, uh, that are required. But specifically for drinking water, we strictly follow the WHO water quality guidelines. Thank you. Thanks for that. Um, Bob had posted a question in the chat about the um, some of the challenges, but I just wanted to jump to Amadou for a minute. Um, if you were able to join in, I, I had a question for you and I see that um, Jason has posted a question as well. So in terms of conflict management, 
What was the experience at the community level in terms of women being engaged in the processes? I wonder if you could speak to that. And, and I might add my own question, which was about your reference to the use of GIS maps. And I'm just curious whether data played a critical part in how you were able to bring people together. Was it helpful to have these visualizations about what was happening with the water supply or what some of the threats were? Amadou, are you able to join in? Yes, uh, good morning, how are you? Uh, so, thank you for this question. Uh, first, uh, in terms of uh, visualization, visual, how people use JS to have uh, see, produce map and so people can view the, uh, uh, the whole situation, understand the trend and what's going on. Uh, so what we do is we produce uh, uh, two types of uh, maps. We, we produce maps on existing uh, house resources uh, to show how it is, but also we use satellite uh, data to produce uh, a map uh, to show people how the resource was uh, 20 years ago. And by bringing these two maps together, people will see, oh, this is uh, very uh, crucial. So if we don't do anything, we don't, we're not taking action, this is what's going to happen. So the next 20 years, people can imagine what could happen. So that's the first uh, element of using the, the maps. Uh, but it's really challenging because you have to train people to have the correct information using uh, GIS is uh, sometimes complicated. But we, uh, w but when you invest time, really, uh, you get the, re the result at the end of the day. Uh, the other point is to also, uh, when you do delimitation, because uh, these resources are so critical, we, we try to ensure that uh, the limits are, are really understood and agreed. And then you do, you, you, we use the demarcation. So also this, this point of demarcation, you use the uh, GIS to also to, uh, fix these uh, limits and also use it on a plan so that one there's a, 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 at common level, there's a document which is uh, really uh, documents the process. And even when you have someone is constant, have contest, uh, you have a conflict around limit, limit there also the commune will say, no, no, this is the real limit is there. So this is another another point of using uh, GIS. Uh, with, with regard to uh, women, uh, what we do is uh, during the process of uh, doing the diagnostic and understand uh, the status of the resource and how and who are the users, uh, youth, women, um, pastoralists, uh, people really who don't have the normal time voice, we bring them together so that we agree on how they, they're going to uh, access to these different resources. For example, in, uh, around water resources, most of the women are uh, already uh, play a significant role in terms of irrigation, uh, cultivating some crops. Uh, so vegetable uh, is very important for them. So when you have this agreement, and then uh, because there's agreement with uh, the pastoralists, so they don't have uh, damage in uh, their crops. So when anyone has a problem, they will bring it in the community, first time in their own subgroup. And the group will say, okay, let's discuss with the other subgroup. And then there's a, the rule, you know what is the rule. And then if there's damage, what the, what the, the cost is, or if it's uh, uh, someone also privating in uh, animal corridors, there is also a rule for that to ensure that people are not going beyond the, what, what is uh, been agreed. Uh, when it's there's no solution at, between the two groups, then they take it higher level as the whole uh, committee. The whole committee will then discuss the problem and say, oh, this is uh, how it is. Uh, and then when they, there's someone who refused to accept the rule uh, within the committee, then the commune will use their own power. That, this is where the administrative solution comes. And then we say, okay, that's uh, uh, the authority will the, the, say, okay, this is uh, how it is. Uh, and then even sometimes bring it to the justice but most of the time it's solved at local level. More than 90% of the conflict are really solved at, at local level. Thank you. Thanks, Amadou, that was really helpful. I think that also is a good bridge back to um, Bob's comment. So Bob was asking back to Patrick and Brian, when you think about those two levels of top down and bottom up kind of pathways toward um, water security. 
And just a, a question about whether, um, well, how those how those interrelate and what are some of the challenges? So I think, um, Patrick, you had outlined some of the successes and opportunities in trying to establish water security and interact with the framework. But I'm wondering what are some of the challenges that you both see and whether you do think that having that top level framework and the community level action, are they mutually reinforcing and both equally important? Could you just comment on that a little bit? Yeah, uh, thank you, Hida. And um, yeah, despite the significant progress that uh, we, we've made, or rather we are recording uh, in reducing water conflicts and also enhancing water security, still we are still have experiencing significant challenges in terms of resource uh, allocations uh issues on we are, we are having an increasing demand and really uh, to 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 be able to address all this uh, first of all we we need we still need to have uh, greater resources or, or more resources to address the infrastructure gap for instance um uh, we we have uh, we, we have a, pro a proposal uh, to develop um, Zima Two bulk water supply project, and this is a project uh, that will serve uh, Tedera Veta County, uh, the better part of Oi Town, and uh, the, the, the and its environs. Uh, it will serve Kwale County and the city uh, Kilif, parts of Kilifi and the city of Mombasa. The project is expected to cost at least over forty seven billion uh, Kenya shillings. And uh, the national, both the national government and 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 the county governments are not are not currently have the resources to to implement the project. And uh, what we we really need is to have the infrastructure in place, but the finances are not available. And and, and that's why I mentioned in my presentation that there's a need to increase uh, resource allocation to implement these infrastructure programs. Uh, and going forward, I'm sure uh, we have a national conversation on the same. The private sector uh, having these public private, private partnerships would be really key. On the other side, uh, as a county, we also lack the necessary bulk water supply infrastructure. Just to put it into perspective, um, given this, the, the the land area of our county, and uh, this county is also considered as arid and semi-arid uh, area. And the water sources are quite far away from where uh, uh, the, the needs are, where the people reside, uh, where we have land for irrigation and livestock production. So we need uh, to have backwater supply uh, infrastructure, which is really, really expensive uh, to bring water to, to where the, uh, we have the needs. And this still requires significant financing. Um, on the other side, uh, apart from the infrastructure bit, uh, we're still experiencing uh, um, uh, conflicts uh, in regards to uh, priorities. What, what do you want to use with the water that is available? You might have, we want, on the other part, one community would want to have water for irrigation and uh, and agricultural production. But on the other side, we have competing users. Others want to use the water for probably uh, domestic supply and also uh, livestock production. So they, we still need to have a conversation. And apart from that, we still have the uh, the wild animals. We we host the I think the one of the largest national parks uh, in the world. And given the, the resource scarcity, there's a need to to have a balance on how we are going to allocate resources for for the various users. And uh, finally, uh, and maybe uh, my colleague Brian will talk about this, is uh, the political goodwill. Do we really have uh, the will to implement programs that are going to impact or rather are going to help us in, uh, in, in achieving the universal access that we have in the, in the various, we have the Kenya Vision 2030 and of course uh, the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, those are some of, of the challenges that uh, we are experiencing and we actually need to to bring together on board all partners and stakeholders to see how we're going to address this. Back to you, Hita. Thanks so much. I, I would just ask Brian if you had anything to add to that. Uh, thank you, Hita. Um... I think uh, Patrick did um, cover most of the uh, challenges because um, 
in most cases, the Council of Governors and County Governors, uh, the Council of Governors serving as a platform to coordinate all the 47 county governments, mm -hmm. uh, the challenges interface. But just to talk about um, some programs co-created before uh, the signing of the intergovernmental framework, whereby you realize that last mile connectivity is not factored in the design uh, of these programs that might have been co-created at the national level. And then um, there is no assessment of the, 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 the capacity in terms of financial capacity and scale of the water utilities to be able to reticulate water because um, as my, my brother Patrick did allude, the role of county government is water and sanitation service delivery. So in instances whereby the scale of project developed and designed at the national level, are developed and the handover mechanism to the uh, county governments is not figured out, there is likelihood of a challenge in terms of the utilities and county governments being able to absorb and undertake the last mile connectivity. But then not also forgetting the political goodwill uh, between uh, the top chiefs, uh, other council of governors and the minister of water, whereby in some instances, you might have um, a cabinet secretary or a PS who knows what the intergovernmental framework and the objective is. And then there is uh, a reshuffle to another docket. Before again, the chiefs meet and agree on the roadmap again. Uh, everybody on the, is on the same page. That might uh, lose some significant time that would go into um, implementation of the, the full structures of the same. When you go talk about also uh, legislations that might seem to claw back or to claw back on devolution or some legislations that might seem to perform or to perpetuate the performance of functions of the county governments by the national government uh, in some instances that makes um, the goodwill and the faith in the process uh, dented to some extent, but it's a continuous uh, effort to mm -hmm. strengthen intergovernmental relations of the two levels of government, not forgetting the financing that comes with uh, implementing the entire structure of the intergovernmental framework, which also um, uh, may have some significant gap, but we do appreciate that partners or sometimes come in and close that gap. Uh, and then also um, the data of the sector, which really aids decision-making to the policymakers, which in some instances, if there is no robust collaboration between the ministry and the council of governors, which coordinates the 47 county governments, uh, that might delay data availability, uh, affecting some implementation of key resolutions signed off between the two levels of government. I think Thank you, Brian. Thanks so much for that. Yeah, it's a very complicated job you have. <laughs> Um, Serafina, can you just um, move to the next slide and share some of the contact details for the project participants? And I want to thank everyone for joining us today. I'm, we're sharing the contact details. I know there are some additional questions that might be a little bit more granular for this conversation. I do hope this was helpful for everyone. Um, and feel free to reach out to any of the people listed here, or we can share other contacts with you as needed if there are additional follow-up presentations. I did take away quite a few lessons myself, um, including about this question about government ownership. The linkage to sector financing, I think, is very interesting and something to dive into. I'm sure we'll hear more about it this week at Water Week. Um, yeah. Thanks to everyone. Thank you very much to the participants and to the organizers at CWE for making this all come together. Happy Water Week, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much, Heather, for being such a good moderator. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.